Halo's hunters are a lot more than a standard infantry unit. Each hunter you encounter in game is actually a collection of worms, a species called Let Golo. The Let Golo are some of the most mysterious species in the Halo universe, so much so that even their former fellow members of the Covenant don't know everything about how these mysterious creatures function. Yes, they were used as deadly enforcers of the Prophet's will, but that doesn't mean they actually believed in the promises of their religion, the Great Journey. Each hunter individual that you encounter is actually a colony of the Let Golo species, a large collection of individual worms all working together as one unit. Their Latin name for human taxonomic purposes reflects this, being referred to as Ophis Congregatio, which directly translates to Serpent Union. The Let Golo were first discovered by the Covenant thanks to a device that had been reverse engineered from the Forerunner Dreadnought that sat at the heart of their holy city, High Charity. These devices were called luminaries, and they were typically used to locate Forerunner artifacts. On one particular relic hunting mission, a luminary picked up tons of signals at a planet called Tay, which was relatively close to the Sanghili, or Elite, homeworld. The Covenant quickly dispatched an artifact retrieval team, and when they arrived, instead of finding vast arrays of new technology, they found huge colonies of Let Golo worms located throughout the planet's outer rings. This meant that they could survive in extremely hostile environments, such as the vacuum of space for extended periods of time. As it turns out, these outer rings were actually the remains of some kind of unknown forerunner construct that had likely been orbiting the planet. The Let Golo hives present on the rings had somehow consumed large portions of the installation, literally eating the technology. Upon further research, these Covenant determined that certain groups of Let Golo consumed exclusively forerunner alloy, others ate rocks filled with crushed and compact circuits, while others would avoid any of these materials entirely. Of course, this was absolutely blasphemous to the Covenant forces that made the discovery, and soon a war was waged against these strange creatures. Most of those who were dispatched to Tay were defeated by the Let Golo until an arbiter named Jet Lakmuti was sent to live among the creatures and learn of their strengths and weaknesses. In his time on one of the planet's moons, he discovered some of the first recorded instances of Megalet Golo, a large collection of worms banding together to create one single body. These Megalet Golo were deadly during ground-based battles, and because of their strength, the Covenant faced many losses. Until Jet, the arbiter I previously mentioned, suggested that instead of fighting with the Let Golo, that they indoctrinate them into the Covenant. A bargain was eventually struck. In exchange for space travel capabilities, they would help serve the Covenant. This series of events became known as the Taming of the Let Golo, and Jet is regarded as one of the Covenant's most notable figures because of his actions during this time. The Taming of the Hunters, the Grunt Rebellion. Were it not for the Arbiters, the Covenant would have broken long ago. Hunters aren't the most social creatures, at least when it involves cross-species communication. Usually, they refuse to interact with any of the other Covenant species aside from the Sangheili. They typically regard them as annoying, and if someone is foolish enough to get in their way, they run the risk of being trampled or blasted to bits. Ironically, communication is an integral aspect of how the Let Golo function. If they didn't form complex hives, they likely wouldn't be any more intelligent than your average everyday worm. Unity is their true strength, and when they combine, they're a force to be reckoned with. Let Golo colonies take many forms aside from the typical hulking beasts that you can encounter in-game. Each collection of worms is called a gestalt, which is an organized whole that is perceived as more than the sum of its parts. On their own, they're fairly small creatures, reaching lengths of around one and a half meters or around five feet, but a combined hive is much larger, weighing in in excess of 5,000 kilograms or 10,000 pounds. The weird thing about hunters is that they don't seem to have any real intelligence until they combine with others of their species. A single hunter worm doesn't appear to have complex thoughts or emotions, but the more that combine together to form various gestalts, the more intelligent and seemingly sentient the whole becomes. If a single colony of Let Golo becomes too large, it will often split, which is typically how Bond Brothers are created, and also why they're almost always encountered in groups of two. This is why they become so angry when one of the two Bond Brothers is dispatched. In some instances, specific Mega Let Golo colonies were forcibly separated in an attempt to increase their battlefield efficiency. If their Bond brother dies, they've essentially lost their children or a part of themselves, and the rage that this caused could be useful. This rage could be a powerful tool during battle, and the Covenant higher-ups intended to exploit it for their agenda. The most common gestalt you'll ever encounter is the Mega Let Golo. These are the hulking beasts you fight throughout each Halo game. They come in a few different forms the standard blue variant that we've all come to know and love, a purple variant which was seen in the earlier days of the Human Covenant War, a gold variant which was fought by members of Alpha 9 during the Battle for Earth, and more recently, ardent Megalite Golo, who have served alongside Atriox and his Banished. Thanks to their interconnected nature, they don't typically need to audibly communicate with each other, instead possessing what almost seems like a psychic link. 
When they do communicate, they either intertwine together or they seem to speak in low, almost subsonic rumbles that occur when colonies begin vibrating their bodies. Many have attempted to translate these moans, but not much useful information has been gleaned. These vibrations typically correspond to basic emotions, such as comfort or recognition, though some believe they may be more complicated than that and that they're actually reciting poetry. Their ability to be aware of their surroundings also helps them be extremely alert, making stealth operations when they're present nearly impossible. Considering they communicate through subtle vibrations, it makes sense that they'd easily pick up on the tiniest of those, such as the sound of a dampened footstep. Each Megalet Golo individual typically has three names. A personal name, which they're given upon their formation, a bond name, which is a name that bonded pairs will both share, and finally, a heritage name. The heritage name is derived from the most successful Megalite Golo in their genetic lineage. If a Megalite Golo accomplishes some sort of notable achievements, its offspring will use this name. An example of a Megalite Golo name is Igido Nosa Fasu. Igido is the personal name, Nosa is the bonded name, and Fasu is the name of one of its successful predecessors. Typically, each hunter is still part of a larger hive mind despite their individual naming designations, but some specific Megalite Golo have taken to a much more individualized sense of self. Colony, one of Atriox's banished leaders, is one notable example of this. It's possible that large, isolated Let Golo hives begin developing their own personal identities when separated from their homeworld and, by extension, the vast majority of their kind. Megalite Golo can also come in a few other forms that are distinctly different from those typically seen in game. The first notable example of this are what I call the Mega Megalite Golo, which are seen in Halo Legends. Supposedly, these enormous gestalts were only able to form thanks to the planet they were currently on and its relatively low gravity, compared to the crushing strength of their homeworlds. Hunter Captains are one other example of such a gestalt. These deadly formations are still technically Megalite Golo, but act as leaders for all other Megalite Golo under their command. These efficient enforcers have only been seen deployed by Colony, the banished leader I previously mentioned, and are some of the only hunters ever deployed with energy shielding. Another special form of Megalit Golo deployed by Colony is the Goliath, which is actually a pair of Bond brothers combined into one gestalt. These formations don't typically exist because of the nutrients needed to sustain them and are only created in moments of extreme crisis. Colony are in of themselves a very unusual Megalite Golo pair as well, some believing that they are a specially evolved form with the innate ability to lead large contingents of their species. Colony is responsible for the creation of several unusual applications for Light Golo worms, such as clusters designed to enhance friendly vehicles, which are referred to as vehicle symbiotes, and the formation of living barriers designed to impede enemy vehicle traffic and attack anyone that approaches. Not only does Colony seemingly have dominion of all Light Golo forces under Atriox's regime, but they also lead other species into battle using a specially designed banished translator device. For some reason, Colony has been known to communicate with the Huragok or the engineers, though the details of their conversations are indecipherable. This could suggest that the Light Golo possibly have greater links to the Forerunners, much like the engineers, which were created by them as living computers. Potentially implying that the Light Golo are biological constructs as well, but that's just a theory. Now, remember, a Light Golo is an individual worm, one single creature, but together they can create compound intelligences that move and think as one. As of this writing, there are six known types of Light Golo colonies. As I've already mentioned, there's the Mega Light Golo, but this is only one of those six. The other five are Dipho Light Golo, Rulo Light Golo, Sabao Light Golo, Kanto Light Golo, and Thano Light Golo. The Dipho Light Golo were specifically cherry picked by the San Shayum or the Prophets for exploration of Forerunner machinery. Hunter worms are small and skinny creatures that can easily fit into tiny pathways that other members of the Covenant could not. So they employed this special type of hive to map out the tiny passageways of the Forerunner Dreadnought that was centralized in High Charity, for example. These worms had a very refined palate and would not consume Forerunner objects. Colony also controls a specialized ground unit called a Skitterer, which are small gestalts of Dipho Light Golo, originally conceived during the Days of the Covenant. Thanks to their erratic behavior, they never saw use until Colony employed them on the surface of the Ark during one of the many battles with the Spirit of Fire. Colony was able to integrate Light Golo worms with locusts as well, though which kind is unclear. I would assume they made use of Dipho Let Golo or the Rulo Let Golo. The Rulo Let Golo are a special kind of gestalt that has been engineered to control excavation platforms such as scarabs. How much control the hive actually possesses is unknown, but it would seem that it's limited, judging by the fact that most scarabs need a driver or supervisor to properly function. 
Not only this, but if they were independent organisms, Red Team wouldn't have been able to take control of one during the events of Halo Wars, and Sergeant Avery Johnson wouldn't have been able to use one against Tartarus in Halo 2. Sabao Let Golo are even larger colonies of Rulo Let Golo that are a core component of extremely heavy duty excavation platforms. A notable example being the Harvester seen in Halo 4 Spartan Ops. Not much else is known about how this Gestalt functions, but I can only imagine the destructive potential. Sano Let Gola are one of the more unique Gestalts I've mentioned so far, because they were actually used by the Forerunners during the Forerunner Flood War, 100,000 years before the Master Chief was even born. What they intended to use them for is unknown, but ONI personnel has speculated that they may have planned to use these highly aggressive colonies to disable flood controlled ships. This would have been a smart strategy considering hunters seem to be entirely immune to the flood thanks to their unusual physiology. For whatever reason, this plan was abandoned and the Thano Let Gola were stored beneath the surface of Installation 04, where they would continue to live and breed long after the death of the Forerunners. When the Master Chief destroyed the ring, he unknowingly set them free and they became an almost insurmountable problem for Jameson Locke during a top secret ONI sanctioned mission to one of the shards of the Halo. This formation is extremely hostile towards any living being, particularly anyone possessing an object that emits electromagnetic frequencies. If they so much as detect such a form of technology, they'll destroy it, along with anyone living and unfortunate enough to get in their way. The Forerunners were no strangers to altering the genetic codes of different organisms, so it's very possible that the Thano Let Gola's DNA was modified in some way in an attempt to combat the ever-growing flood threat. The final Gestalt is called the Kanto Let Gola, and its origins and traits are entirely unknown. Unfortunately, any and all records regarding this enigmatic Gestalt was lost during the fall of High Charity to the flood. Perhaps the information still exists somewhere within the construct's walls, but until someone is brave or foolish enough to retrieve it, we'll never know. If this in-depth look into Halo's hunters was entertaining to you, sound off in the comments and I'll make more like it, detailing the other species that live in the Halo universe. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. I have a lot more of it's planned. While you're down there, leave a like, and please take a moment to share this video with your friends and family too. That really helps me out. All right, now if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go play some Halo.